Hello, my name's Carl. My call sign is now Mike Zero Sierra Zulu Tango. And for those of you who have been watching the channel, already know that in the past couple of weeks, I <coughs> completed the advanced exam for the full license in the UK. So it means now that I am a holder of the full license um, in the UK. What that really means is I <coughs> I knew enough theory to actually complete the exam. It doesn't necessarily mean that I know everything I need to know about the hobby. So what normally happens in the UK is when you're learning the theory, you would go to a club and you would have a, a mentor or a group of mentors that help you to work your way through a theory into practice. But what we've got in the UK during the past year, as we know, we've had a series of lockdowns and restrictions. So what that means for me is that when I when I got my head stuck into the advanced um, manual, I had to do a lot of self-learning. I had to learn all the theory by reading a book, watching videos, trying stuff out in, in, in at home, just to try and understand how the theory works. So that's where we are at the moment. Okay, so there's an opportunity here for me to start trying to put some of the theory into practice. My first focus really from home, seeing as though we're stuck at home for a little bit more, is to reduce the RF noise in getting into the radio and into the radio room. But crucially, now that I'm allowed to use more power, I really want to cut down on any potential um, EMC um, issues, any uh, uh, compatibility issues, any uh, RF that I'm putting out. I want to make sure that the neighbours and uh, in this house were, you know, I'm trying to cut that down as much as I can. So what's something that I've noticed that's happened this week when I've started to creep the power up just to test what it's like on 75 watts and then even 100 watts. I, I noticed that because um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm using these Heil headphones and they are pretty decent and they're quite lightweight only um, they're not like long they're not the type of headphones that you can wear for a long period of time but what I noticed is when when I was, I was transmitting on these I was getting a, a distorted I was getting my own voice distorted into the uh, head into the headphones so to me that, that was an indicator that I was having RF getting back into the, the room and it was entered into the headphones. Now there's a number of reasons why I think that is happening and I'll, I'll just try and talk through some of my logical thinking, my logical steps. I'm hoping by just working step by step that could help others that might be in the same uh, position as myself. There's lots of great videos and lots of great articles on EMC and a lot of it is covered and even in the foundation there's a section on EMC which gives you, you know, relatively some basic understanding. Then as you step up through the intermediate, you start to understand a little bit more about uh, how our RF can be circulating in your in, in your radio system uh, and through the wiring of your house and such like. And then when you get to the advanced level, then you start to really delve into more of an understanding from a um, theoretical point of view on, on, on why this occurs. These manuals do give you some idea of, of um, what needs to be done to <clears throat> um, to diagnose the issue and then to, to, to solve it. What they don't really teach you in any, any of these books and, and also I've got this I've been loaned this cracking book from um, JSAR it's quite a few years old now. I think I think it's probably about ten years, twenty years old. Why we're in a picture of someone with a tuxedo handing a plate of gadgets? But there's not much really around uh, the the process that you have to go through to uh, diagnose and then to cure cure the you know the cause of it. There's lots of stuff around how to cure the symptoms, but there's there's a process around actually let's get to the root cause of it. And that's what I'm hoping to do in the next video or two, is just try and get to the root cause of things. Okay, so um, I first started to notice something was not quite right in here quite a while ago really on 80 meters even on low power even on 30 watts or even 50 watts on low on, on on 80 meters i've got a usb lamp here that would dim every time i would talk or it would change its change its settings 
and to me that that gave me an indication that there was all RF nasties getting into to this room. So what I did at that point, I got a one-to-one -one, um, choke ballon. It's an it's called a, also called a line insulator, and my theory was that um, the antenna outside was radiating um, back on the outside of the uh, coax, the feed line, into the radio room. So my first port call was to put on this this ballon on there, and that cured the issue on 80 meters. But then when I got the new headphones and they they arrived just this week. I then started to notice that when I lifted the, the power up 75 watts, 80 watts, that I was getting, um, sorry, I was just getting a lot of light coming through the window. What I started to notice was the on the headphones, I was hearing um, a bit like Kylo Ren off uh, Star Wars, this sort of really sort of distorted voice as I was talking. And it wasn't a monitoring function, it was definitely a um, single sideband getting into the headphones. So my first course of action was to go, okay, is it the antenna? Is it something to do with the antenna? And I'm getting some RF back. So I ran outside and I plugged in a um, dummy load. So I actually switched the antenna out, plugged in a dummy load and it was gone. I was getting nothing back into the headphones. So to me, it's, it was, it's related to the, uh, the antenna for some, uh, for some reason. So uh, my thinking then was, okay, is the one-to-one -one choke balance enough? Do I need to actually consider more about how this station works? The way that the theory tells me is I need to consider the, the antenna, the radio and the mains system as um, a path. Uh, both ways for for noise and and RF and the you know the the earth side of things, and what I need to do is now that I put a choke ballon on, and I can put another one on the back of here, which I will do, that might only reduce the uh, RF nasties coming back into the room. I don't think it's ever going to completely uh, get rid of it. I could try and move the antenna to the bottom of the garden, but I've got a number of issues with the bottom of the garden. I've got a tin, a tin shed right there. It's a very cramped area, very difficult to get radials in. And like many people, this is this is the this is the space that I've got. So, uh, what I need to do is just try and make sure I've got a path for the nasties to come, um, rather than circulate in here. I want them to get out. Um, so my next move is to make sure that the radio is earthed. Anything in here, I need to create a path to a RF earth. So I, I've got to try and find a way of getting a rod into the ground. And that way, anything that I put out to the antenna, anything that comes back along the outside of the feed line, it gets a path straight out and into, into an earth. That's my next move. But I've also bought some toroids ferrites, you know, the ring, the, the big chunky uh, toroid rings. I'm going to be putting them on the power supply, on the DC line, on the red and black cables, wrap them around a toroid. And then I'm also going to put a toroid on the power side, the bit that plugs into the wall. I'm going to put a big toroid onto there. And because the, the noise that I'm getting on the bands, right, bear with me on this, the noise that I'm getting on the bands, that that can be generated from all sorts of power supplies and Christmas lights and whatnot. That's finding its way uh, through the radio system back to the antenna and then back into the system. It just creates this level of noise. I'm hoping by finding these pathways through the iron through the system to Earth and putting uh, chokes on either end of the system, I can actually try and cut down on some of that noise getting into the radio so that's my plan this process might take quite a while to solve it's not going to be uh, an hour spent clipping on some ferrites and twisting some wires up and it's all over and done with it's going to be a process of elimination really to to work out what the cause of it is and then to put a remedy in place so i hope you found this uh, video useful so far 
um, it's just going to be a process of chipping away at it and having some patience and uh, I hope eventually I'll cure the the problem and hopefully by documenting that that might be useful to other people as well so thank you for watching if you enjoy these videos if you enjoy the channel give us a thumbs up and if you, you know, if you enjoy coming back to the, the, the channel if you hit that subscribe button that would be really useful for me as well but thank you for watching and look forward to the next video so bye bye for now